Good morning, and welcome to worship here at Muhlenberg Lutheran Church on this 14th Sunday after the Pentecost. It is so good for us to be together during this time of worship. Today, we continue our four-week worship series entitled, I've Been Meaning to Ask, where we'll be exploring a guiding question each week to lead us deeper into courage and connection. This week, we address the question, what do you need? Please see our webpage to download your study guide for the series at muhlenberglutheran.org forward slash worship series. And now for some announcements. As always, remember to check this week's chimes for full details on all that we have going on in the life of our congregation here at Muhlenberg. First, today is Equipping the Saints Day here at Muhlenberg. So come on down to the Mac to join your Muhlenberg family for a time of food, fellowship, live music, and a ministry fair. Our campus will be open from 1 o'clock p.m. to 3 o'clock p.m., and you'll have the opportunity to learn more about many of Muhlenberg's ministry teams, connect with others who share similar interests, tour the sanctuary, and you'll get to see our new Wellstream system in action. See the chimes and also our webpage for more details, and an event map is at that webpage too. Uh, that webpage is muhlenberglutheran.org forward slash equipping the saints day. Second, we invite you to please see the chimes for an important update from the Gathering Together Task Force on congregational survey findings, worship schedule news, and more. Also, we want to reiterate some good news that you may have already heard. Uh, Muhlenberg has a new children's minister. Uh, Ashley Saunders has accepted the position and will be starting on September 1st. Please see the chimes for more information and background on Ashley, and she will be here at Equipping the Saints Day. So stop by and help us welcome her. Also an update on pastoral support. We welcome Pastor Daniel Hess, who will be offering part-time pastoral support during Pastor Lauren's medical leave of absence. Please see the chimes for more information and background on, on Pastor Daniel, and also he'll be here uh, on Equipping the Saints Day today, uh, so stop by and say hello to Pastor Daniel as well. Additionally, we are still searching for our new finance manager. Please lift up this search in your prayers, and if you think that you or someone you know may be a good fit, please see the chimes for more information on how to apply. Finally, we continue our interview series today entitled, Why I Give. This week, where Congregational President Karen Thompson sits down to talk with members about how and why they give their time, talents, and treasure to help live out Muhlenberg's mission. Please stay tuned until the end of this worship video so that you can see Karen's conversation with longtime members and volunteers, Malcolm and Judy Wilfong. You can also find these interview videos on Muhlenberg's YouTube page under the series or playlist, Why I Give Interviews, as well as on Muhlenberg's Giving webpage. And now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Today as always, we gather as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many of you have ever had a bad day and found someone offering you unsolicited advice? How many of you have ever had a bad week and had someone rush in with dozens of suggestions for how you might fix things as if you hadn't thought of that before? We've all been there and we have all done that. It's part of our humanity. Our scripture reminds us today that often in the face of hurt, what people really need is not a list of advice or solutions, but the simple presence of love. So let us pray to God today, acknowledging that we are works in progress and that relationships always come with mistakes and confessions. Let us pray. Gracious God, we so desperately long to say the right thing, to be the right thing, to find the right solution, that we overstep the line. Forgive us for assuming the place you fill. Forgive us for imagining that we, in all our humanity, could possibly fix all the hurts in this world. Instead, give us the grace and the strength to stand by our loved ones in their moments of need, to witness their hurt without trying to fix it. You are God, we are not. Teach us how to be a friend. Teach us how to ask, what do you need? Teach us how to point to you. Gratefully we pray, amen. Family of faith, no matter how many times you have spoken without listening, assumed without knowing, offered without asking, or rushed without waiting, you are forgiven. God knows your desire and your intent. God knows when we try and miss the mark, and God surrounds us in grace. So hear and believe the good news of the gospel. Every day is a new day for love. We are claimed, we are forgiven, we are invited into relationship. Thanks be to God for growth and grace that know no end. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of long winters and long summers, in the words of Paul, do your best to come to us quickly. Come to us with loud praise and joy, or appear to us in a still, small voice. Come to us through friends, or come to us through strangers. Come to us in these texts and in this hour of worship, and come to us quickly if you can. We are seeking you. We are always seeking you. With grateful hearts, cracked open by love, we pray. Amen. A reading from the second chapter of Job. Now when Job's three friends heard of all of these troubles that had come upon him, each of them set out from his home. Eliphaz, the Temanite, Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Namahite. They met together to go and console and comfort him. And when they saw him from a distance, they did not recognize him. And they raised their voices and wept aloud. They tore the robes and threw dust in the air upon their heads. They sat with him on the ground for seven days and seven nights. And no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his suffering was very great. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 2 Timothy. Paul writes, Do your best to come to me soon, for Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me 
and gone to Thessalonica. Sercenus has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful in my ministry. I have sent, I have sent Tychius to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will pay him back for his deeds. You also must beware of him, for he is strongly opposed to our message. At my first offense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've been meaning to ask, what do you need? I think in this question we found the natural successor to last week's question. Last week we asked, where does it hurt? It was a simple acknowledgement that we all carry pains and hurts, and within authentic community we are meant to bear those truths together. The truth is not always easy, but it is always at the heart of genuine community. But once a pain is known, care is meant to follow. What do you need? Well, if holy curiosity informed our first week's question of where are you from and truth was last week's companion, then openness is our way this week. Being open is one of our core values here at Muhlenberg. So this question of what do you need should be leading us only further into understanding who we are as a community. Because in this context, uh, being full of it is not helpful, nor is it loving. And the it there can be answers, solutions, distractions, platitudes, or indifference. Whatever the it is that we're full of, the question, what do you need, calls us to be open and emptied of our assumptions ready to genuinely respond to the needs we find there. I remember when I was in high school, I was working on my Eagle Scout project. The culmination of a Boy Scout career is this major project of service to the community that is meant to have a lasting impact and serve as a sustainable gift to a community. I knew that I wanted to help the Roanoke Rescue Mission, a wonderful organization that provided great care to those who were experiencing homelessness, addiction, and those fleeing domestic violence. I knew that the Roanoke Rescue Mission had just opened up a new center for women and children, and that was where I wanted to help. So I met with their leadership and laid out my plan to build them a library. I was going to build shelves and gather books and catalog everything and organize the library so that it would be a sustainable and meaningful gift to this new center. Everyone needed a chance to read and grow. They looked at me and said, that's a great idea, but we don't need that. I, I was floored. I thought I was doing the right thing by doing something great for this organization and thought it was even better that I was rolling in with a plan in hand. But no, I offered answers first without listening. Somebody else was already working on a library for them, but the rescue mission had a more pressing need. Once I was able to stop my best intentions and listen, to listen to what was needed, then I was able to get to work on a meaningful project. Once I was not so full of my own solutions, I was open to what was truly needed. This question, what do you need, is another essential question for building a community of Christ-like compassion. What do you need recognizes that we all have needs and that we need each other. It reminds us that we each have unique needs. We can't assume to know what is best for others. 
You are the best authority on your own trauma, pain, and needs. But that fact remains true for others as well. Our openness to hearing the needs of others will allow us to truly be helpful and compassionate community to one another. This question could also be asked as, what do I need? Prompting us to reflect on our own needs, priorities, and desires, which can sometimes be difficult to discern from one situation to the next. We see a really good model for this in our lesson from Job today. In the midst of Job's afflictions, everything going wrong, three of his friends promptly leave their homes and come to him. They tear their garments, weep loudly, and then sit with him for seven days, saying nothing. I love this, but, but this might seem weird and silly, but notice that they didn't come in with platitudes or fake emotions or trying to get Job to feel anything other than what he was feeling. They don't try to offer solutions even when they know that their friend is hurting. Their response is the ministry of presence, of true solidarity, of seeing his excruciating pain and joining him right there. This ministry of presence, the openness to simply be with one another in our times of challenge and not try to fix everything right away, this is essential within Christian community. When I was in seminary, I took a class on pastoral care, and I remember telling my mom about this class while I was driving back to Virginia one day. And she asked me, so what do they teach you in that class? Do you, do you learn all the right answers? Do you learn the right things to say when you show up to someone in need? No, absolutely not. Pastorally and personally, I've walked into situations of pain and sorrow where I know that my answers and understandings would have been no good. They would have been no help to anybody. When I was a hospital chaplain, I remember walking into rooms, saying hello to a patient, and just letting them talk to me for an hour. And as I would go to leave, they would say, thank you so much for all of your help, when in reality, I, I didn't say much. I didn't do anything. I was just there. I listened, and being open helped them carry their burdens that they were bearing that day. Our faithful care for one another simply begins with our presence, as Christ was and is present with us. We trust that just as we are with one another in times of pain and sorrow, God is with us. Ultimately, the point of the book of Job is not a big conversation with God where God finally explains that, oh, don't worry about it, Job, everything happens for a reason. No. no. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Hearing Job's cries, God takes Job on this whirlwind tour of the cosmos, from the heights of heaven to the depths with Leviathan. God doesn't deny Job's pain, but Job is reminded in this encounter with God that he is simply one small piece in this vast universe, and he is not the center of it. But it doesn't mean that Job is insignificant. Job is inextricably linked to all of creation, an important part of the goodness that God is still pouring out, and God loves him. We are not the center of the universe, but God loves us and is with us. This both-and understanding of the chaos and pain of life with the order and hope of God is the heart of the incarnation. God is with us through it all in tremendous love. Now, presence is important, but sometimes in our presence, a need is stated, and we are meant to be ready for this as well. We hear, as today, that beaten and imprisoned, Paul writes to Timothy with a simple request. Come quickly. That's what Paul needs. He needs Timothy with him. He lists those people who have abandoned him, but says, I hope that God doesn't hold it against them. In his greatest moment of need, Paul doesn't need revenge, but instead asks for companionship. In essence, this is what we all need. For someone to come quickly, to gather the things that we want, and to simply show up for us. 
Now, the, the Reverend Remington Johnson was a hospital chaplain. They offer a reflection on Paul's words in 2 Timothy by saying, Paul offers us a moment of intense humility as he opens himself to share what he needs, the grievances, the stuff, all that is important, and offering space for folks to respond openly and honestly about what they need is such a sacred act. Note, this isn't some form of paternalism where we quickly judge Paul's needs and make decisions about whether those needs will really serve Paul. We may, of course, eventually move to a place in the conversation where we talk about what we can and cannot provide, but we must first trust the one we are meeting to know what they need. We can respond to someone's named needs with additions and clarifications, helping them to really target the need that caused the specific request to arise. But again, the first step is hearing, fully hearing what someone's needs are and discerning how we might respond. There will always be needs that we can't meet. But we won't know until we're open to receiving them. And I think we need this question so intimately these days. All of us are so full. We've endured 17 months of a pandemic that has claimed 635,000 lives in our country to date. We've borne witness to a nationwide reckoning with racism that has upended every institution into a time of painful self-examination. We see horrific stories on the news today about what's unfolding in Afghanistan and the pain that that bears for these communities and for the soldiers who are there and who have come home. We've experienced as well the normal losses and stress of life over these unprecedented times. We're grieving. All of us, whether we want, whether we know it or not. Well, now is the time to know. Now is the time to sit by one another for seven days in silence. Now is the time to hold one another in grief and laugh with one another in joy. Now is the time to know the needs of our own hearts and the needs of our neighbors. Now is the time to be open to what we may find when we ask, what do you need? Because I believe that we'll find God with us in that question. We'll find God with us in our moments of pain. We'll find God dancing in our joy and liberation. We'll find God reminding us that we're not the center of the universe, but as a part of the universe, we are held in love. So once again, I've been meaning to ask of yourself and others, what do you need? Let us be open to what we find there. Amen.
let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear God, we pray for the Church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the Church that it is a safe haven for all who seek your presence. Fill it with leaders who echo your expansive and generous welcome. Fill it with people who ask questions, including, what do you need? So that we can truly learn what others need and deepen our connections and conversations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole creation, that plants and animals have the habitat and resources to thrive and flourish. Inspire us to protect threatened habitats and ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for individuals in positions of authority. Raise up wise and discerning leaders in governments and grant and guide them to seek justice for every person. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in need. Support and encourage those who are unemployed, underemployed, or experiencing poverty. Bring food, shelter, clothes, and stability for daily life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation. Help us to recognize our own needs and to be open enough to hear what other need, others need from us. Help us to be people who show up for others in their times of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful departed who showed us how to honor God with our heart. Inspire us by their example and renew our faith, trusting that we will be united with them in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We invite you to be creative in your means of reaching out with Christ's peace this week. We have this question of need in our hearts today, and so many of us need this gift of peace that reconciles us to one another. We invite you to share that peace in the comments or with those in your household or make a plan for this week for who you'll connect with in this time. As we move forward in our time of worship, we move into a time of offering, where your faithful giving to our mission here at Muhlenberg allows us to meet many needs within our community. We invite you to make a one-time or recurring gift online at muhlenberglutheran.org slash give.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you bless us with gifts of guidance, new life, growth in grace, and fruitful labor. Accept the first fruits of time and toil, field and orchard we offer here. Bless and multiply these gifts to our nurture and the care of your creation. For the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy God, our Maker, our Healer, our Teacher, your magnificent creation springs forth from your Word. All that has life and breath praises your name. For your word that sustains the earth, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. You sent us Jesus, your word, to renew the world. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, preached your mercy, and called us to faith. For your word in our Lord Christ, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Nourish us with the spirit of your word, that we may grow in grace, bearing the fruits of redemption and sharing your strength and beauty with all the world. For your word in our lives, we entreat you, O God. We entreat you, O God. Accept our thanksgiving and receive our prayer for the sake of your living word, Jesus our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Knowing that this time of year marks a big change for our community as students and teachers all head back to the classroom for a new season of learning, let us pray for all who are beginning a new school year that both students and teachers will be blessed in their academic endeavors. Almighty God, you give wisdom and knowledge. Grant teachers the gift of joy and insight, and students the gift of diligence and openness that all may grow in what is good and honest and true. Support all who teach and all who learn, that together we may know and follow your ways through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. We pray that you have a blessed school year. We look forward to all the growth that will be happening during this time. You can stop by the church and pick up a blessing tag in the connection box if you're heading back to school and would like to carry that blessing with you on your backpack throughout this year. And now at this time, let us all receive this blessing. Family of faith, as you leave this place, may God grant you the curiosity to counter assumptions the vulnerability to befriend, the bravery to speak your truth, the wisdom to listen, the strength to ask for help, the resiliency to choose love even when it is hard, and the awareness of the Holy Spirit always beside you. Amen. In the name of the great connector, love itself, go in peace. We go to be open, authentic, relational, serving. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you both for being here to just chat with me this morning. Um, my first question is, what brought you to Muhlenberg? Now, I'm pretty sure you've got a long history with Muhlenberg, so you decide how far back you want to go, but how'd you end up at Muhlenberg? Well, I'd have to say mom and dad brought me, so I became a member in October of 1957. And then when Judy and I got married, uh, it was a natural transition for me for her to join here and she no, the she'd been active. The truth is, he said that if we were going to get married, I had to join the Lutheran <laughs> Church. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but that sounds about right. <laughs> so was that, was that an easy transition? Oh, yeah. oh it, was, it was a challenge for me having, coming from a Mennonite Brethren background. Okay. It was very, very different. Um, I took a class called Word and Witness, and it really helped me. And, and I, I remember the shock of learning about grace, um, just that it's for everyone. And I just really hadn't been taught that. Um, but I did learn to absolutely love the liturgy, the music. Um, no, I'm, I'm definitely Lutheran now. And we were married here in 1976. And all three kids have been baptized here. And we renewed our vows here in mm -hmm. five years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's, there's quite a bit of history. Um, so why do you give to Muhlenberg? Well, we weren't able to tithe for a lot of our years as with people working in public service jobs with three children. And uh, so we were able to uh, finally decide to give what we wanted, what we were able to give. And uh, and wanted to give and that has evolved as our children have grown up and left home and the salaries increased with our jobs as they got 
you know, we got more uh, time in, in, uh, in service. And, but why we give is basically because we see the good things that are happening. I mean, we feel like the growth here at the church through the uh, gathering, adding the gathering area, adding the uh, activity center, uh, the growth in membership, but the outreach of the church too. Um, and, and mom and dad for me were a good model. Although they gave the dad write out the, would write out the envelope every Saturday night, and I'm like I don't want to do that. So we we're big proponents of simply giving. Yeah. We know that it's happening whether we're here on a Sunday or not. And the interesting thing about simply giving it's it's I guess a silly analogy, but you know when you get your paycheck, and all the taxes have come out of it, your Social Security, etc., you never miss that money because you never had it. And so with Simply Giving, um, the money goes to the church first, so you're, you feel good that your obligations have been met, and yet because you get used to that, you never miss the money. I always used to be like your dad, oh, there was something about that envelope and mm -hmm. being able to turn it in, and maybe because I always saw my dad do that, but I thought, no, I, I, it's this physical thing mm -hmm. of giving, mm -hmm. and then it just... Obviously, we weren't here at church, and I thought, I need to try this Simply Giving. Um, because you always said, oh yeah, if I'm going to miss, I'll fill that back yep. in. Mm -hmm. But then it yep. didn't mm -hmm. really happen. And you are so right. It comes out, and it should be our first offering, right? Mm -hmm. It should be first gifts back to God. Um, right. So yeah, I love Simply Giving. <laughs> we, we don't miss it. It is simple. Mm -hmm. um, you all give in a lot of other ways too. That's the, the money end of it. Um, but some of the other things that you give back your time. Well, we're very involved. Well, with Muhlenberg, I sing in the choir. Judy has sung in the choir. We've been involved in the church leadership through council. Judy was involved in uh, Sunday school. I've been involved in uh, uh, property committee. Um, we've I've been involved in um, Habitat builds other uh, builds through uh, disaster in, out of in Florida, in Iowa, West Virginia, uh, and those are those are great. That's fun. I taught uh, a lot of Sunday school. I enjoyed teaching the children for many years, but I I enjoyed more teaching adults. And for a long time, I taught a, a Sunday school class that was a lot of fun. Um, also women's retreats for about 10 years we did women's retreats um, that again is something I'd love to see picked back up again but being in charge of those for at least 10 years yes. it was a lot and of your fun. biblical storytelling I do biblical storytelling and I do a lot of that here at Muhlenberg you two are the perfect example of being the hands and feet of, of Christ you know mm. it's um, you feel his love and then you put that love into action out in the community. We need to be a lay-led church. Right, exactly. And mm -hmm. it takes all of us, so you guys are great examples. Well, thank you. I think the pandemic just kind of closed the doors and everybody got used to not stepping up and doing things and it got almost comfortable. Um, so we need to put a fire under people again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sure. having this conversation with me. And thank you for what you do as the president of the council. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Mm -hmm.